Malicious code can be a serious threat for individuals and organizations. And it's important to understand how it works so that we can better protect ourselves. In this video, we will be analyzing a real world example of Python malware to see how it's constructed, how it spreads, and how it can be stopped. Whether you are a cybersecurity professional, a programmer, or simply someone seeking to expand your knowledge on malicious code and how it operates, this video is absolutely for you. So buckle up and get ready for a technical journey on the world of malware analysis. Before we start, you're gonna find the GitHub repository related to this video in the description below. Enjoy! So, as you can see, there are a bunch of libraries imported here. So, I'm not going to go through each one of those libraries because it's gonna take a lot of time. I'm gonna start from line 30, okay? As you can see, we have imported the colored logs uh, library and the loggy library. So, basically, login is used to save uh, on a file or print on the console software behaviors. For example, all modern softwares now use login. And the question is why? So basically, as I said before, to know the behavior of the software, if it's crashed, I will log the reason of the crash to a file. So when I start fixing the problem, I will go directly to the log file and look for lines of the crash. And we have imported the colored logs uh, library too. So we can see the messages, the log messages, uh, colored into the console. So the first thing we do is we create the logger object. It's the object that's gonna save uh, the behavior of our application or the log messages of our application. Now we use the colored logs library and we specify the format of the message. If we go to the Python login documentation, you will find uh, different things to add in your format. But here basically we use only the message. And then we specify the top level, which is debug here. Uh, there are five levels, debug, info, warning, error, and uh, critical. So basically, levels are just to describe the message. Let me show you that on the documentation. So those are the levels. Here in our script, we specify the default level, which is debug, which means we're going to see the info uh, messages, warning and error and critical messages, okay? If you specify, for example, the warning, uh, the warning uh, level as the default for this uh, logger, you're gonna see only the warning messages and the error and the critical messages, okay? So you only see what is in top of the level that you specify as the default one, okay? So, uh, yeah, and that's it. Now let me actually show you that by creating a simple example. So let's just copy those lines so we don't need to write them again. And we're gonna just like create a try and accept statement. So I'm gonna try to divide one by zero. And then if there is an error, okay, just log into the console this error, okay? Operation failed, okay? So now let's just run this program. And as you can see, we get a red error, which is operation failed. So in the format here, we only specify the message but we can specify other things. Let me just add like created, okay? It's gonna return the time when that message is created. So let's run the program again. As you can see, it's returning the time. Well, I can specify the level name too and you can do whatever you want, okay? Now let's jump to the next part. Now, those two next lines are just to get the default gateway, the private IP address of the router. Let me show you that in a practical example. So let's open the Python terminal and copy the network interface uh, library. Now let's copy this line and the second one. So basically the network interfaces library, one of its functionalities is like the, it's like the fconfig command, okay? So that's actually what it's doing. As you can see, if I print the gateway, we're gonna get the default gateway, which is the IP address of the router. So that's basically what those two lines do. Now let's jump to the scan hosts uh, function that's gonna scan all machines on the same network for a specified port and look if it's uh, open or not. So first of all, we're gonna log a message that we are scanning, we are scanning all machines on the same network uh, with a specified port. And we're gonna log also the gateway. And we're gonna create the port scanner object we're gonna use the nmap library dot port scanner. That's great. And then we're gonna specify some uh, some parameters. Okay. So we specify the gateway and 
we specify the subnet mask which is here 24 so we can scan all the 255 machines on the network i think because that's the default uh, subnet mask okay and we are going to pass some arguments too so dash p for uh, port which is uh, the port that, that is the parameter of this function and dash dash open okay now we create the all hosts um, object so port scanner dot all hosts so scan all hosts on this network and then we log the hosts into the console so basically that's will return all machines that have the specified port open okay so let's do this in a practical way so basically we're going to create port scanner object okay. yeah the port is wrong okay so for example we're going to specify like 80 okay we specify the port 80 and as you can see it's returning whole object so now we're going to do this we're going to only get the hosts and then we're going to print them now let's jump to the next part so th this function uses an amazing library called uh, paramigo it's good to know about it so basically this function will get some um, SSH password from the internet okay so first of all we log uh, the downloading password message into the console then we specify the url this url contains like the top 20 common ssh password and then we just use the url library the request and we retrieve the url okay and that will save the file name in the current directory and then we log uh, into the console passwords downloaded so that's basically the function now the interesting function is the next one first of all we're going to create an ssh client object we're going to talk about this line later when we do it in a practical way and then there is a try statement so basically we log the host that is passed here as a parameter and the password and then we use the connect uh, method to connect to this host on the port 22 which is the ssh port and the username is root and the password is the password that we pass to the function so if there is no error if that line was passed successfully we're gonna get this message we're gonna load this message successfully connected and then we open sftp to have the ability to get files and put files also execute them so we're gonna put this backdoor.exe and we specify here the destination on the server that we are connecting to and then we return true so if there is a socket error if there is a networking error or the ssh port is closed we're gonna log this error into the console computer is offline or port 22 is closed and we return false also maybe the password or the username are incorrect so we're gonna specify the exception here which is authentication exception and then we said we're wrong password or username and we return false and here there is another exception so socket is open but no ssh server responding and then we'll log this error to the console this function is really uh, powerful this is just like just trying to connect to ssh there is no brute force here but in the next function we're gonna brute force for ssh this function is like the regular uh, brute forcing so we open the file the word list so basically we use the open method and we open the word list with the read uh, with the read parameter so this is this word list we pass it here into the brute force ssh uh, function and then we use a for loop so for line in files for a password in the word list in the file here we create a variable called connection connect to ssh and we specify the host and the line which is the password and then we print the connection if it's successful it's gonna print true if it's uh, refused or there is an error it's gonna print uh, like uh, false okay because this function return uh, true or false okay and then we sleep for five seconds because we're gonna get uh, banned and blacklisted okay so we sleep for five seconds to be like more uh, human so that's it now we're gonna jump to the next function which is the driver spreading function the guy who made this uh, script he also provide like uh, 
like description for what he did so this function makes the worm copy itself on other drivers on the computer also on the startup folder to be executed every time the computer boots that's great now let's see what this function do so first of all we are looking for the full path of the startup folder so basically as we said before whatever we put in the startup folder it will be executed every time the computer boot up so the os.path.expand user will return the path of the current user for example c users my username and then we add the startup folder path and we save it in the boot folder so now we have the correct path of the startup folder then there is a while loop and we are going to execute what is inside it infinitely first of all we get the drives of the machine this variable basically we return this and then we make it clear by splitting it and we get this list uh, that contains all the machine's drives then a for loop for the drives list if one of them is equal to the c drive we're gonna use the copy to function to copy the dash dash file dash dash which is the full path of the worm.py file to the boot folder which is the startup folder here so when this script become executable it will copy itself into the startup folder else just copy the worm.py to the specified drive whatever it's c or d or uh, g so on if there is an exception just pass and we slip for three seconds and we do this infinitely until we break the computer <laughs> then there is the start drive spreading function basically this function will use the thread module so we will execute the drive spreading function multiple times concurrently and yeah this is our script that's the video thank you for your time i hope you enjoy it and you learn something new if you did please subscribe and uh, like the, the video so we can make more uh, valuable great content and uh, thank you for your time me so and the uh...